of the many accolades. Uh, you've been selected as Bobcat Breakdown's Coach of the Year, so congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Maury. You're welcome. Uh, six weeks ago, you walked off the court in Stockton, California, uh, one of just four 12 seats to ever be in the Sweet 16. Now you have a little bit of time, collect yourself, mm -hmm. look back. What has kind of hit you most and what's on the forefront of your mind? Well, I just think um, how we were really able to accomplish what we set out to do this time last year. It's May 2nd now. Um, our young ladies, like everybody else is in school, is in their last week of uh, classes and prepping for exams. And we were on a mission this time last year to set out to do exactly what we did and understanding really how difficult that is. Um, because there's so many variables and it's so fragile this, this season. And to actually do what we set out to do is pretty impressive. A lot of people say in mid-major hoops, the ceiling for a mid-major team mm -hmm. is the Sweet 16. But year in and year out, mm -hmm. we always find with your program that you set out goals and you achieve them. So what's kind of the next step now that you are at your goal? Well, clearly is about winning that, that game in the Sweet 16 now. Um, we saw firsthand that next level in the national champion, South Carolina. South Carolina. So um, they had three players drafted in the top 10 of the WNBA. Two of them we faced. Um, for us, our staff is now the challenge in going out um, and finding those next great Bobcats that help us achieve that. And it's the players now that return to the roster that return next year, that develop their game over the summer. Um, and they're hungry again. They're just motivated, hungry, and want to be better. And they have this time now um, to achieve their own individual goals and to work on it until we gather uh, as a team next late August, early September. Since we last spoke, your team finished in the top 25 mm -hmm. uh, in the last national ranking at number 23, uh, the highest uh, mid-major team uh, got this year. Uh, now that you're in that national spotlight, mm -hmm. how are you and the coaching staff taking advantage of that? Well, I think we're just, you know, always going about our business the same way. I mean, we're, we're, we have a plan. We have a strategy um, to be who we've been. Um, we have a definite style of how we play. Um, a lot more coaches, players, and people know Quinnipiac now. I can't tell you um, that week from winning games and getting into the Sweet 16, the exposure that we were um, able to receive, not only from you guys, but in the national spotlight, that when we just walk around with the cue on our uh, lapel now, um, that everyone says Quinnipiac and we know how to say it. So um, it, it's that national branding and everybody now knowing that and taking advantage of, advantage of that exposure, but still at the core knowing who we are, who we want to become, and just you know being diligent in that every day, taking care of our, our business. It's only been about a month since the season has ended, but AAU tournaments uh, are mm -hmm. starting to you know, come into full gear now. Um, how has recruiting changed? Um, well, we just came off the road, two real busy weekends, and um, again, our staff was out um, covering the country and, and getting to the venues, and actually this afternoon we will be in full day meetings sifting through, uh, and again, um, organizing, identifying not only uh, new possible recruits, um, but um, young ladies that we've been involved with and, and seeing where we can go um, and garner the commitment moving forward in, into the program. So I'd assume it, it's become a little easier? Recruiting is never easy. I don't care what level you are, um, it's never easy. But again, the recognition of the program, um, being on the national scene in the Sweet 16, uh, has allowed us, I would say, um, to get uh, into different areas of the country that maybe we haven't been. Um, but also, it, it's just us, you know, doing our, what we do I think really well as a staff, um, being able to attract quality student athletes, being able to build upon what we've already been able to accomplish and excite different student athletes about what we're accomplishing here in Hampton, Connecticut and at Quinnipiac University. Trish, now that you've been to different parts of the country recruiting, 
you know, you look at another side of the national spotlight, you know, a different aspect, and that's scheduling. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys have some games, you know, away from Hamden this year. I know you have the one with Michigan State, but any mm -hmm. other teams that, you know, you would like to play or, or, or that you potentially could play? Yeah, uh, Maury, the scheduling is so critical to our success. I mean, you know, getting, garnering, you know, an 11 and 12 seed, um, staying in a conversation for an automatic berth um, if you don't win the MAC tournament is really vital to what we're doing here all season long. Uh, we have Dayton coming in, we have Northern Colorado coming in, we're potentially looking at a tournament in Iowa or another MTE like we went out and played in Vegas down in Tampa um, which has a whole host of other um, top 10 uh, tournament teams uh, that were down there. So they're unconfirmed. We're looking to confirm that uh, one of two of those tournaments uh, in the next week or so to put the, the schedule finally to rest. You mentioned in California, Gina Oriama helped you get this job a number of years ago. Yes. So can Connecticut women's basketball fans expect, you know, maybe a clash between the, st the two state's best teams? Well, I just saw Gina on Saturday um, and uh, he, he he's very proud of what the state of Connecticut he's helped build and then our programs and he's he said that you know for us going forward there's going to be a real challenge because now there's not only a regional expectation um, but there's going to be more of a national spotlight on what this program did accomplish and he really um, you know said to be able to you know manage the expectations going forward with this program but um, in terms of trying to play we've talked about it in the past um, and it's something that you know if we continue to build upon what we were able to accomplish I think this this program um, would look forward to a match with UConn in the next couple of years.